Hello, I'm Miles O'Brien at the Kennedy Space Center for SpaceFlightNow.com. Joining me, David Waters and the Space Shuttle Endeavor didn't even get a full tank of gas on this night. It was on its way, supposedly, to the International Space Station, but in the process of fueling it up with a half million gallons of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, NASA found a familiar problem with a new twist. And as a result, Endeavor's launch has been scrubbed. The next opportunity will be on July 11th. The crew on its way toward the pad is now in the process of taking off all of its gear and making its way eventually back to Houston and another launch attempt come next month. But let's talk a little bit more about exactly what happened on the launch pad. David Waters here to give us some more details. First of all, the area of concern here is in the so-called intertank area. This is the hydrogen down here, oxygen up here, intertank is in between. I guess you can figure that one out. And there is a, um, a pipe, if you will, liquid hydrogen pipe that attaches in this spot and this is where a leak has been uh, discovered yet again. Let's go through the details, David. Well, Miles, this is actually not the first time this leak has happened. It happened also on the first launch attempt for Space Shuttle Endeavour in that same area we're talking about where they had a liquid hydrogen leak and were forced to scrub that particular launch attempt. This has also happened two missions ago during the STS-119 mission and one launch attempt there. So it is a problem NASA has had before, but they haven't been able to determine where it came from. And uh, let's go back to the STS-119. Two missions ago, they went and replaced all this hardware on the space shuttle thinking, okay, that might fix it. Well, they replaced the hardware. They were able to launch without finding a leak again, but it turns out that probably was not a solution to the problem. It may have just temporarily fixed it, uh, but they went back and did this again with this mission and try to replace the gear just like they did with STS-119. No success, we had the leak again, now twice with this. So they're gonna have to stand down on this space shuttle for about a month before they can go ahead and try and launch again. And just to be clear, the reason they're standing down for a month is not to fix this particular uh, leak. They can probably do that a lot faster. The problem is they're gonna run out of time uh, on this range here at the Kennedy Space Center. There's another important launch which is waiting, an Atlas launch which would send a pair of spacecraft to the moon that NASA would use to map the moon, all part of the, the, the after shuttle world, the Constellation program, and ultimately sending uh, Americans back to the moon. That has a narrow window of opportunity and so the st shuttle has to sort of stand clear for that launch. And then by the time that launch, assuming they uh, launch successfully and on time, occurs over the next few days, by the time that would happen, the space station would be in an orbit which would not allow it to generate enough power for the shuttle to safely dock there. And so during that period of time, there are no dockings at the space station. And the time when it finally gets back into uh, an orbit um, is, is a so-called beta cutout. That's the term. When it gets out of this beta cutout would be on the order of July 11th. And that's when this first opportunity will come up. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's go back a little bit to the whole scenario which led to this scrub. They got a late start here tonight because of some bad weather in the area, uh, a lot of lightning and thunder in the area. It was kind of wild here for a little while, wasn't it? Yeah, lightning for several hours. They had to delay tanking about uh, three hours before they could start because of that. And then we had more fronts moving in when the astronauts were close to walking out. And you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that out. When you're putting in a half million gallons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen, you don't want to have lightning anywhere nearby. That's something that is a very volatile procedure. In any case, they got a late start on the fueling up process, and then relatively early in the fueling up process, actually earlier than had it had occurred before on the previous uh, mission, STS-119, as David was mentioning, uh, this leak in this area uh, cropped up. Uh, different kind of leak, a little slightly, a little uh, faster, a little sooner, and as a result, at 2 a.m. Eastern Time, three hours, 40 minutes before the intended uh, launch of Endeavour to the International Space Station, the NASA launch director, Mike Leinbach, made the call. Let's listen to what he had to say shortly thereafter. Let's see, we got into tanking on time, and uh, everything looked like it was going fine until we were about an hour away from the end of tanking, and we picked up the, uh, the hydrogen leak at the umbilical again. And this time it was a little bit different. We were actually picking up the leak before we got into the topping sequences, which is where we've seen this leak before. So at that time, we knew we had a little, little bit different signature. Um, we watched the, the data very closely. Um, we did our standard troubleshooting techniques by cycling the valve to see if we could clean up that leak again, and, and indeed, it, it never cleaned up. The signature was a little bit different, but that doesn't surprise me. Uh, with cryogenic leaks, it'd be really very unusual to have an identical leak. And so the fact that this one was a little bit different 
and we thought we might be able to work our way through it. Uh, you know, that didn't surprise me. We were trying to do that. Uh, the team did an outstanding job over these last four days to get to this point. At some, <clears throat> excuse me, at some points in the over the last four days, I, you know, I personally doubted whether we could get here. I mean, there was a, it was just a, a heck of a lot of work that the guys pulled off. So I'm extremely proud of the team. I sure wish we could have rewarded them and the astronauts and, and everybody else with a launch this morning, but the leak was way out of spec again, and so we were, we were just not comfortable pressing on. Uh, as much as we tried to, to fix the leak, we just couldn't do it, so we had to scrub and secure again, and, and uh, we're in the process of draining the external tank now. That'll take about two and a half hours, and then we get into the inerting again, which is our standard process. And so sometime tomorrow evening, we'll be able to get our hands on this disconnect again and, and go into uh, taking it apart. Uh, I imagine we'll, we'll put together a more detailed uh, troubleshooting plan this time and, and, go, and go execute that once, once we get our hands on the disconnect again. All right, that was Launch Director Mike Leinbach there. So now, Miles, we are going to have to stand down, as you mentioned, because of that issue on the range and because of that beta cutout. And we will not be able to have a launch of Space Shuttle Endeavor now until July 11th. July 11th it is, that's when the space station will be in the proper orbit to generate enough electricity to allow a docking of the uh, Endeavour there. Um, important that that, uh, that lunar uh, reconnaissance orbiter get off and on time and, and allow NASA to start thinking about the next chapter after the, the space shuttle. But this is an important mission for the space station, putting on the, uh, the so-called front porch to the station. I understand there's no screen doors in space, right? Not but they so do have a front porch. Uh, where they will be uh, doing experiments that allow uh, things that um, they would like to see how they endure in the vacuum of space, the temperature differential, that sort of thing. There's a crew swap out that's involved and all. Let's not forget, there's six people on the International Space Station, finally, after all these years, and finally, maybe it'll start delivering on the scientific promise. And they're now able to do what they intended to do, do science research on the space station. That's what the whole thing was built for. And with that extra capability of having experiments on the outside of the space station now, they're going to be able to do some new studies there. Of course, that, pa that uh, front porch is on the pad, three miles behind us for now. And of course, we will be there on July 11th to give you complete coverage here on spaceflightnow.com when Endeavour has yet another opportunity to install that front porch in space. For David Waters, I'm Miles O'Brien, spaceflightnow.com.